Welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. We're gonna jump right into episode 16 here. This is the GPU versus ASIG episode. This is your host Carter, let's get into this. Now this episode was originally supposed to air almost two and a half weeks ago, but what we've seen is a huge change, literally overnight. And when I mean change, I mean the entire altcoin ecosystem. Across the board, all altcoins started dropping by 20 to 30%. Volumes were steady, yet price was still declining. There wasn't a lot of buying support across the board. In addition to that, when looking, what I usually look as an indicator, you take a look at eBay and you look at completed auctions Auctions. So you go out to eBay, you type in R9 280X, you look at things that have been sold, full mining rigs or the cards themselves, and see what net changes happen. Obviously the prices were inflated for a long time, and then I started seeing them come down. And I mean, it went from selling cards that were $450 for an R9 280X, within a week they started dropping by $100, to the point now where they're setting right at $165 to $185 for these cards. Way underpriced when it comes to MSRP. Now the immediate knee jerk on that is obviously people are like, oh, A6 are really impacting it. I think a more it's more than that. It's more than the, the total batch orders of all the A6 combined, looking at the total batch orders and purchases of great GPUs. People in general are not seeing the returns that were originally there in December through around mid-February. You couple that with the activity of moving things over to multi-pools to where they're switching to the most profitable coin and then dumping those onto the exchange in exchange for BTC as BTC prices dropping by 30 to 40 percent over that same period of time and you have a recipe for a lot of confusion and a lot of speculation that people are moving to an ASIC type of environment GPU mining's out and it, it all goes bad and what we're gonna aim to do on this is break down the technical specs of the differences it's pretty obvious which one kind of wins when it comes to power to hash ratio I don't think anybody needs any refresher on that but we're gonna throw up a few tables kind of explain not just that linear side of how much you know the change of switching to something like an ASIC is but also you know ASICs are you're all in on an ASIC once that thing is no longer profitable and or not worth the actual power that use it with a graphics card you have a little bit of hedge and we'll get into that a little bit here in more detail but um, I think that this will be a clear and concise breakdown and it'll make all of you feel a little easier when it comes to mining and actually set some goals and have an idea of what to do. So first, what is a miner? What is the activity that we're doing with these graphics cards and or ASICs? What is the point of it? So the miners are a, uh, for lack of better terms, a node. A node in a large peer-to-peer -peer network that whole goal is to solve a solution, a difficult proof of work problem which confirms transactions on the network in an effort to prevent double spending of the virtual currency and essentially process the transactions for that activity and for that effort and for the money that you spend both on power and hardware and all that the idea was to give you a incentive to do that that incentive is the coin so now that we got that out of the way let's start digging into some numbers here and start looking at some of the data that here us at BBT have been kind of calculating over the past three to four months both having some grid seed devices and then looking at our other rigs that we've had built and have had running working on various coins now let's take a look at the scope that we're going to be looking at here. We're going to include the GridC GC3355 chipset in an 8 GridC configuration through most of this. Then we're going to bring in the R9 280X, the R9 270, look at a 290 and a 290X as part of this review also just to give everybody a perspective. In addition to that we're going to look at the power to hash ratio and then do a more deep dive and more than just the traditional here's the power for hash Ash pointing to a very linear analysis. We're gonna to try to get down and look at a time span from when we acquired the grid seeds versus our other rigs and give a better analysis on this. We're gonna look at the net change at the total value of the devices, including the grid seed price change, essentially from March through current, including the graphics cards also. Their prices, both from a retail and a resell eBay perspective, which have dropped significantly also. In addition to that, we're gonna to look at the time frame changes in the median difficulty and take in that median BTC price change too. Uh, a multi-prong approach at this because I think that 
a lot of people get confused and keep it very linear and then don't really understand the total grasp of what's going on when a coin halves the distribution on top of price changes it really kind of mixes the waters up so we're going to put some tables up here try to walk you through it and explain what to look for and then kind of be able to help you forecast when you're working on a coin or you know if you're trying to pay off your gear what's the best approach lastly and in closing we're going to go through if you're a new individual checking this video out kind of getting pulled into the cryptocurrency just from the gravity of all the stuff that you're seeing in the media and stuff an honest and easy way to get into it and you know be fiscally responsible when you do it point you to what we feel would be a good entry point for you and why now let's jump into this analysis looking at three different bbt builds a grid seed build that had eight of the gc 3355s a build with six r9 280x's and a build with six r9 270s now we'll break that analysis down on cost power to hash ratio and another value that's not normally calculated which is depreciation value and cost over that same time period for the devices in addition to that the coin that was used during this analysis and still continues to be used on these boxes is dogecoin now dogecoin during that same time period from march first to current has had three adjustments in its coin distribution and you're going to see here in a second why that's a very important to know let's pull up the first graph looking at the eight grid seeds over these separate time periods from march 1st to current and projected on through june 2nd which is the next roughly the next adjustment in the coin distribution if we look at these first line here the total grid seed cost for this unit on March 1st was $1,600. The median difficulty during the period before the first adjustment was $1,150. The median BTC price during that time period was $622. And obviously, the price for Doge at that time, the median price over those 14 days before that first adjustment was 147 Satoshis. That let this rig here that was using roughly 72 watts generate on average $21 a day essentially generating around $294 in total revenue at the power cost of around $2.38 over that entire time period, roughly 17 cents a day. But over the next time period, the net change in value of the grid seeds themselves dropped about 17.5%. Couple that with the Doge price dropping to around 110 Satoshis over the same period, the median BTC price dropped to $487, yet the median difficulty over that time period actually ticked up a little bit, and that was probably due to a lot of these grid seeds coming online. Now all those factors combined, that 35 day period still made under the original first period of 14 days, bringing in only a 217.35 for that total time period. Now looking at this last time period, which is essentially April 30th through current and projected to June 2nd when the next coin adjustment happens, the grid seeds have now lost roughly 56% of their value as you can buy grid seeds for around $87 a piece versus 200. The median difficulty of Dogecoin also adjusted to around 782 based essentially on people just coming off of Dogecoin and going to other profitable coins. And lastly, looking at the price of Dogecoin, roughly average around 100 to 103 Satoshis. That time period of 60 days in the projection, if it holds current right now, looks like only a $222 revenue through June 2nd for this device, bringing the total since purchase roughly to around $733 of generation of currency. Bottom line, if you add up the money that's been generated, plus the adjustment in capital costs depreciation of the grid seed dropping from 1600 for the same setup to get one for around 700 for the same setup, there's still a deficit because those two ad numbers added together is only around $1,430. So it still is in a negative offset if you were to sell the grid seed to set up right now for what the current value is, you would still show about a $200 loss. Bottom line right now, it's not looking real good at current prices and current projections of ever breaking even if you bought into grid seeds right out of the gate at over $200. Now, if we look at the same level Level of analysis with an R9270 and an R9280X. Let's do the 270 first, just because that really lines up with the mega hash. 
output versus the grid seed. Now, if we look at the total cost, they're roughly around the same of March 1st, an R9-270, roughly a full setup was anywhere from 1690 to 1840, based on just looking at our pass receipt for that time frame. From a fixed asset perspective, a six times R9-270 rig roughly cost about the same as the 8X grid seed rig at that point in time in March 1st time frame. They're around 1600 to 1800 dollars for the entire rig but from a power usage obviously the r9 270 uses about 1100 to 1200 watts of power that equates to about two dollars and sixty cents a day if you're using that continuously if you're in the middle of the country uh, on the, one of the coastlines and you're looking at you know 20 22 cent kilowatt hour you're looking at double that cost around five dollars a day for a rig like that you bump that up to an r9 280x rig and now you're looking at about 1575 watts of power usage about another four or five hundred watts on top of the r9 270 and you bump that cost up to about three dollars and 78 cents in the midwest and around six to seven dollars on the coastlines so if we take both of these through that same workflow that we did the ASIC device you can see across the board using the three unique time periods that we chose with Dogecoin some pretty big differences first and foremost the extra revenue brought in by that R9 280x setup of around $1,200 was really offset by the cost of power costing around $400 during that same time period. Yet the R9 280X rig at the time of purchase was about a $3,200 rig. You can get that same style of rig right now on eBay for around $1,400. Around $1,390 is what we priced out with the cost of the R9 280X is down to just insane low levels. And looking at the R9 270 rig, while it's just a little above the revenue of the grid seed rig, it has near nearly $300 in power cost versus the $18 in power cost from the grid seed rig in that same time period. But one interesting point that I want to bring up in this analysis is the fixed asset cost value over the same time period. The grid seeds, roughly $1,600 for that setup, is now worth around $700. That's what you can rebuy those at this point in time at. The R9270 rig, the 6X rig, you can currently buy for around $1,180 for the same setup. It's about a 36% savings versus if you were buying it in March. And obviously that's due to a lot of people placing the graphics card hardware out on on eBay and just crushing the price. Bottom line, looking at the R9 270X 6X rig was a better deal over this same time period. It didn't lose near the value that the grid seeds did. Overall, it generated more currency. And even with the extra cost of power, it's still, if you were to sell the rig, plus the revenue that you made, you would have came out better. But in the case of the R9 280X, if we take a look at this table here, and I actually put the R9 290s and 290Xs on here too. If you look at the change from March to current, the massive amount of adjustment that occurred, especially on the resale market on the R9 280X, it really didn't shake out to be as good of a deal. This brings me more to a conclusionary statement about this analysis. One, you gotta look at this analysis in the scope that it's in right now. It's looking at three different sets of equipment, purchasing them at a certain time, and then looking at their return on the investment. But looking at cryptocurrency mining in general, and if you look at the folks that were in it early in this time last year, after the kind of bump from the $200 BTC price and it went down to back to 100, Litecoin being at two and three dollars, a lot of believers stayed with it, hedged on the power cost, you know, sold some of it and stored some of the coin. And that's kind of the point here is pay for your power cost, but this is more of a long term play if you want to really try to make money out of this. The folks that bought in almost at the peak peak in January paid some of the highest prices of the graphics cards and I've been now trying to dump them for almost a 40 to 50 percent loss these individuals were not in for a long haul and what now has happened is it's created this secondary market of very value deals on graphics cards deals that are just asinine when you look at the retail price I mean as much as these things were as a premium over their retail value in January and February they are on a 
discount now at almost the same levels. I mean, we'll put this chart back up here and you can take a look at this, looking at some of the differences and change just in May alone. And these are completed auctions. You go to eBay, you choose, you put type in the name R9280X and check the box for completed listings. What this is gonna show you is listings that have been completed and it shows you a good idea of what the pricing has been on closed auctions. So this gives you a good indicator of what the current status of secondary markets are on anything. I mean, you can use this for, for anything when you're pricing something. So really looking at the value that a graphics card GPU mining brings versus an ASIC, bottom line, it holds and it will hold a value of far longer than an ASIC will. And you get the extra benefits of a secondary market that even when it's being heavy pressure to sell, it still will be worth a value. There's other reasons to use this graphics card. It's a good hedge. These prices are crazy cheap right now, but they will come back up. I mean, the retail gap right now is pretty substantive. And while here at BBT, we haven't reviewed a ton of ASICs, we've actually ordered a few and still like a lot of other people out there waiting are waiting for them you know and based on our just limited experience on the grid seeds and prior to this bbt we had ordered a few butterfly lab devices you know bought them in early march showed up in november so both i mean this is a repeat example of something that you, you order and then over time the situation changes it's a high risk where the graphics cards are more firm believers you can get them there they work and you know you don't need six of them to partake in in this event if you're a new person watching this video and trying to get a handle on things go out there pick up some of these really cheap graphics cards build yourself a small rig start with one card hedge on it use the card for what its intended purpose is do some gaming on it at night return some of that value back to yourself by pulling on a cryptocurrency such as vert coin or even a coin that really doesn't put a lot of heavy stress on your graphics card if you want to try to increase the longevity of it and at night mine dark coin now to go ahead and conclude this episode i'm going to end you with a bottom line up front regarding asic mining the bbt's views on asic mining are like a professional sport when you get into it you got to make sure that you're focused have your eye on the ball and that you know why and what you're doing with it you got to manage it methodically you got to make sure that you're getting your value back because the end game on the a6 is a zero value item you will have a boat anchor after the ASIC no longer provides value. So the goal is very simple. The best line to return your investment and then make a profit. If you sound like you're that type of person and you're going to put that level of focus, then by all means, draw out your plans, look at your break evens prior to purchase and get it done. Get your ASIC ordered, wear out these companies to make sure that they're trying to deliver it on time and get the word out there if people are not. With regards to GPU mining, this is for the common man. This is for the person that doesn't have a lot of time but wants to dabble in it, wants to hedge on some of the extra value that they can get out of their graphics card it allows you that concept of trading up if you're going to go in and you have a budget and you want to spend 175 dollars well lucky you right now to r9 280x's are going for 170 dollars on ebay get them while they're hot keep your focus on coins such as dark coin and vert coin coins that are asic resistant these are ultimately the coins that are going to be successful for gpu mining it will give you a much better rate of return and if you're a large dogecoin supporter then you can use those coins to exchange for doge coins the closing point here and we'll end the episode get people engaged the more people that are hedging at night downloading and running mining software even if it's on one card it gets a little bit of cryptocurrency in their hands to where over a period of a few weeks to three weeks they could start buying things with it buy games buy something small even if they're only pulling in two dollars a day in a cryptocurrency in 10 days they got twenty dollars and they can buy something on Steam. The idea here is very simple, hedge. Trade up and hedge if you're a GPU graphics card miner. Again, and in closing, I wanna thank you all for sticking with us. It's been a few weeks since we posted a video. I know this is a little different than our normal videos, but we wanted to make sure that we got something out regarding this subject. Go out there, trade up, get yourself a new graphics card, and be sure to check us out on Twitter. We tweet a lot of different pictures of what we're working on out there. So you wanna see what we're working on and what's coming up next? Go out there, Twitter, and you'll see it before it gets posted on here. Stay tuned. The